Do you have a question for the Belmont Police Department? We have a new show that's premiering today with Belmont Police Chief Jamie McIsaac called Ask the Police Chief. Chief, one of the questions that people have been asking for decades in Belmont is how do they negotiate the intersection coming out of Belmont Center going under the railroad tracks? We're going to talk about that today. Can you tell us how dangerous that intersection really is or is not? Well, it's <clears throat> the, the question today about the, the traffic under the, the railroad bridge in Belmont Center has been a constant topic of conversation within the community for since probably I was, you know, going back to the 60s and 70s. In terms of the dangerousness of the intersection, it is actually um, not one of our most dangerous intersections. It's certainly one of our most confusing intersections, but in terms of uh, crashes with injuries, it's very low. Um, and one reason for that is because of the congestion of traffic that we can talk about later that uh, goes under the bridge. So any of the crashes that we do have there tend to be relatively low speed. The intersection does become dangerous when there is light traffic under the bridge and people particularly coming down Common Street uh, and Concord Ave uh, tend to go through the intersection at uh, speeds a little bit higher than they should be when there's, when there's no traffic or if it's late at night. Now, one thing I think I, I just heard you say is the, uh, there, there is a common belief that that intersection is actually safer because it is as congested as it is. As our police chief, do you have a, an opinion on that? Well, I think, um, you know, it, the, the, there are a number of reasons. There's, there's so much traffic there during, during the peak hours that, yeah, the traffic is very low. So it's, 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 um, it's relatively safe. Um, I don't think it's safe for pedestrians and uh, people on bicycles, particularly going through that intersection when the traffic is heavy. But as far as motorists goes, um, yeah, it's a relatively safe intersection. It's confusing, but it's relatively safe. Can you take us through how traffic is intended to negotiate that intersection? Yes, I will. And I think it's important that maybe we break it down in segments. For the first picture, let's look at um, the intersection in general, and let's look at the traffic volumes that, that come through that intersection. In 2018, the town hired the BSC group to do a townwide traffic study. And between the peak hours of, this is just in the morning from 8 to 9 a.m., there's 3,056 vehicles go uh, through this, travel through this intersection. That's uh, roughly 50 motor vehicles in, in one minute's time. In a 12 hour uh, traffic volume period, we had 21,122 motor vehicles go through that intersection, that, which is you know, uh, 5,000 less than the population of the entire town of Belmont. Um, the heaviest way traveled is Concord Ave uh, southbound. We had 1,468 motor vehicles come through there. And this is in the morning. So in the afternoon, these numbers flip and the traffic is actually heavier in, in the afternoon than in the morning. And one thing you have to remember is Belmont's geographical location is, uh, we know we're sandwiched between Route 2 on the, on the north, which uh, Route 2, the area from basically Belmont to Cambridge has been uh, pinned as one of the top five traffic locations in the state of Massachusetts. To the west, we have I-95 and to the south, we have the Mass Pike, uh, Route 90, I-90. And <clears throat> the reason why you know, we have a lot of tremendous amount of cut through traffic in Belmont. We know it. But the other thing that that creates a lot of traffic in this location is Belmont's geography. There are only three places in Belmont to cross the railroad grade. That's Hills Crossing, Belmont Center and Waverly Square, which surprisingly are our three heaviest traffic locations in town. So these area, this area sees a tremendous amount of traffic, um, especially pre-COVID. And the next slide I'll show you will be the north side of the intersection, and we can talk about uh, how the traffic flows in that area. Okay, so the north side of the intersection, we have uh, Channing Road that feeds into Leonard Street, and we have Concord Ave, which actually, Concord Ave continues under the bridge and then goes west into Cambridge. We have two stop signs, one at Channing and one at Concord Ave. Now, the interesting thing about the stop signs and traffic 
is if we had a continually flow of traffic, say uh, coming down Leonard Street to Concord Ave and the vehicles were spaced six feet apart and it was just flowing, people at either of these intersections would have a very difficult time entering the roadway because the traffic is so heavy. Because the traffic is uh, tends to be bumper to bumper at, at heavy times, it allows for spacing. People are uh, courteous enough to let somebody out of one of these feeders. Now, the first problem we have in this intersection that will confuse people is we have a right turn only from Concord Ave going under the bridge. And then you have vehicles uh, in the it, that are supposed to proceed straight ahead and whether they go to Channing or make a left on a Leonard Street. But if you, when the traffic's heavy, if you make that right turn under the bridge, it's nearly impossible to get over to the left lane to then make a left turn on Concord Ave. So what we'll have down here is we'll have actually two lanes of traffic making a right turn onto Concord Ave to go under the bridge. And, um, and we'll show you what happens on the other side of the bridge as well. Now there's been times in the past when we've tried to enforce these turns down there and we've ended up just making um, matters worse under the bridge in terms of traffic and, and, and backing that up. The next slide will look at what happens under the bridge. Before you leave this slide, Chief, yes. can you talk about the, uh, the pedestrian movement uh, uh, there too? So yeah, we have the pedestrian movement, we have the crosswalks at Channing and Concord Ave. Um, and again, you know, what happens is those are, the, those are probably the two places, safest places to cross. And you need to walk a little further if you wanna cross safely at Concord Ave and the bridge. And what you need to be aware of as a pedestrian is for a motorist coming into this situation during peak traffic, they're dealing with a lot of different things. You know, we're talking about turns and cars moving in and out. So adding pedestrians to them is one more thing that, that motorists have to be aware of, as well as pedestrians, that they, the motorists are, are, you know, some of them, if they're not used to this area, are confused. Other ones have been in traffic since they left their homes in Woburn and Winchester. And, you know, we sometimes see aggressive driving in this area as well. This new, this slide is what happens uh, when vehicles come under the bridge. When I talked about the vehicle taking the right turn from Concord Ave to go under the bridge and then wishing to turn left, it becomes very difficult for them to make a left turn. So what we end up with is vehicles in the right lane making a left turn, which they, they should not do and it adds to confusion. And here we have the no. Again, this is uh, something that we've tried to enforce over the, the years and, and same thing, we end up with, uh, with creating more problems if we stop anybody under the bridge or if we try to direct them to get in the left lane, we end up uh, creating additional traffic. So if we see it and our offices are fortunate enough and they can pull the vehicle over down on Concord Avaways, we'll, we'll enforce that. But in terms of uh, when you have 50 vehicles a minute coming through this intersection and everything, it's, it's very difficult for us to enforce that, um, that rule. And, and, and I don't see any crosswalks here. No, we wouldn't want to introduce crosswalks into this location. This is a very dangerous intersection. The last thing you want to do is introduce pedestrians to it. And one of the things we've talked about is bicycles. So, you know, I, I ride a bike last uh, Sunday I'll come through this intersection when um, the traffic is very light. If I'm coming down Leonard Street and I'm making a right on the Royal or Common, I feel comfortable doing that. Or if I'm coming down Concord and making a right onto Concord and under the bridge into Belmont Center, I feel comfortable doing that on my bicycle. But I would never, um, I, personally, I would never come down Common and try to make a left under the bridge um, just those left turns I won't make on my bicycle. I'll drive a little further to go around those. And I know I've had some discussion with people who, that are cyclists and, you know, they're like, well, we should have as, as much, right? And, and, and you should, but there's a point where, you know, you, wh whether you feel as though you have a right to drive through there, which you do, you have to weigh the dangerousness of it. And as someone who rides a bike, I won't make those, those left turns under the bridge unless there's, there's very little traffic. It's early in the morning or, or later at night and I can see what's happening. And this is the, the last picture. And um, this is the one that really indicates what's going on down there. Now in 2016 and 17, when the town did construction work to Leonard Street and narrowed Leonard Street, 
was the was the last time of probably five times that traffic engineers and designers looked at this intersection. And they even looked at signalizing both sides of the intersection. But the biggest problem was what happened during peak traffic hours. It was just impossible to get the traffic moving through Leonard Street. And this is because of the bridge. The bridge restricts anything that you can do uh, in terms of rotaries, um, in terms of any of those things, because you have to make uh, allowances for trucks to come through here and, and, and the lights. They just couldn't make it work without creating a backup that would, that would probably back up to Cushing Square and back up to Arlington um, and down Concord Ave. So the people will ask all the time, who has the right of way under the bridge in these situations? And it's, this is where it gets a little interesting. This is not a normal intersection in terms of uh, traffic laws like 89.9 that says, when making a left turn, the vehicle on the right shall yield to the vehicle on the left because we have a number of things happening on this intersection. So if we look at the, the red vehicle that I have straight, an S for straight or left turn. So this vehicle is going straight from Concord Ave to Common Street, okay? It sort of may be considered they're taking a left turn, but they're going straight. They're staying on Concord Ave they're, going, they're getting off Concord Ave and going to Common or Royal. And then what happens is we have a green vehicle under, coming under the bridge that's making a left turn. So in theory, that vehicle making the left turn, that vehicle um, coming straight, if we look at this as a classic T intersection, would have to yield to the green vehicle. But at the same time, and this happens when traffic's heavy, we have a yellow vehicle that's going straight to Concord Ave that the, the left turn vehicle would have to yield to. We have another left turn vehicle coming off Common Street, making a left that um, if it was a classic T intersection would have to yield to the red vehicle. So you have a lot of things going on there. So if we cite somebody, if, if somebody was, if that red vehicle was to barrel through that intersection and hit you know, a couple of cars and, and come out and say, well, I had the right of way we could cite for failure to use care when enter, entering an intersection. And so residents will tell you it's stressful to come through here. People, commuters will tell you it's stressful, but it's really a kind of a give and take. And if you, you're patient and you wait for your opportunity, you'll get it. Um, but it, it's certainly very confusing. And then we have the, the white vehicle that's making a right turn. That even adds to it if they then try to make a left turn as we spoke of in the previous picture. So, you know, and this is where I get to it at night or when the traffic is lighter, especially during COVID, we don't have nearly the, the commuters that we have. The vehicle does, the, the intersection does become more dangerous because you have the green vehicle making a left and you have somebody coming down. Uh, the red vehicle would be coming, heading um, east on Concord Ave. And because there's no traffic, that vehicle might be going 25 to 30 into the intersection. And so that creates a little bit more of a hazard for us. The person who would, we would say would have the right of way, and we would say an insurance company might differ from, might differ from our ultimate finding, would be the person who was there first. Um, so if the, we would treat this intersection as sort of a four-way stop intersection where the person that gets there first has the right of way. However, as we talk about in our pedestrian seminars, just because you have the right of way or you feel you have the right of way, doesn't mean you necessarily should take it if it's not safe to do so. You know, you don't have a, you wanna crash your car up and be in an argument when you could have maybe saw somebody coming at a high speed and said, you know what, I'm letting that person go. They don't look like they're gonna stop and, and you let them through. So, you know, in terms of, People will, will, will move to the community or there'll be a new commuter and they'll say, why don't you put signs up? Why don't you put lights up? We've looked at this number of times, uh, at least five times in the last 20 years. This has gotten an official look from traffic engineers and traffic safety people. And the answer is always the same. Due to the bridge, you're, you're limited to what you can do and it's better to leave things just the way they are. And, um, you know, years ago when, when I was a kid, they used to wheel out these traffic um, cans, we called them, and one was in the middle of Common and Concord, and one was back at Channing, 
And there were actually police offices in there that would direct traffic and try to synchronize um, the traffic, but that didn't, that, that was not successful either. So chief, what, what I hear you saying is that when somebody comes into this intersection, they should think about being careful more than thinking about, do I have the right of way or not? Absolutely, they should be. Other thing is, you know, it's against the law, but they should be off their phones. They should be paying attention. This is one of those areas. This is like years ago, I had somebody explain it to me. We were at a traffic calming uh, meeting in, in the city of Cambridge and they pointed this out. They said that intersection in Belmont's the perfect traffic calming, natural calming thing because it, it forces people to be aware of what they're doing as opposed to just driving even, you know, uh, through a green light. You really have to pay attention when you get in here. You have to, um, you know, be willing to yield, you know, whether it's your ego or whatever to somebody else, um, you know, that, that might be confused with the intersection or, you know, I'm sure there's people that get in there and say, you know what, I'm just going to go and, you know, let everybody get out of my way. You know, let that person go um, because, you know, you don't want to crash up your car. You don't want to get hurt uh, because, you know, to make a point that, to argue that you had the right of way. This is a very confusing intersection. It's probably one of the most confusing intersections in Massachusetts. And uh, anybody that will co commute through there will, will, will tell you the same thing. Um, it seems a tremendous amount of volume of traffic. And if you introduce lights and things like that, you end up backing traffic up, having an effect all the way to the Arlington line, all the way up to Park Ave, at Route 2. Um, you know, so this is the way that... Um, you know, all the experts tell us is, is, is the best way to do it, is to leave it the way it is. So if you've ever had a question that you've always wanted to ask the Belmont Police Department, you now have the opportunity to do that. And we will pose that question to Belmont Police Chief Jamie McIsaac and uh, see how quickly we can get it on the air with the Ask the Police Chief. You've been watching Ask the Police Chief with Chief Jamie McIsaac. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Roger Colton, the Chief, and I will see you next time.